Artificially intelligent tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney are revolutionizing marketing and advertising. But you need to remember that if you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So how do you make sure that the stuff you get out of ChatGPT and MidJourney is on brand, is reinforcing the look and feel that you want to maintain in all of your marketing and advertising materials? Well, to do that, you need to make sure you have a strong brand strategy. In this uh, webinar, I'm going to introduce you to the new, these new platforms. I'll also show you how to write prompts that give you good branded marketing materials back. But let me give you a little bit of background first. I started as an illustrator back in 1993. Well, yeah, 1993. I was an illustrator for an ad agency. My job was to develop storyboards and uh, comp mock-ups so that creative directors and art directors could show their ideas to their client. And if the client liked it, then we would produce either the TV show or get photographs made and stuff like that. So in 1995, I started my own firm. And I grew that firm to be about 16 people. Uh, we specialized in creating marketing materials like TV commercials, animated spots, storyboards, um, radio spots, interactive design, and all kinds of materials for um, advertising agency clients or our own clients. One of those clients was a company called Maverick. Uh, this was a convenience store chain in the Mountain West. At the time, there was about 127 stores, and um, they hated their brand but needed marketing materials. We were introduced to them and uh, decided it was probably time for them to have a new brand if they hated their uh, current brand. They actually had a really strong brand associated with Cowboy Old West. In fact, their, their company was called Maverick Country Stores. It had like orange and brown uh, logos. Everything was like an old fashioned saloon style thing. And uh, they had the, the Maverick Man, which had like a big cowboy hat with a big mustache and stuff. So the whole thing was Cowboy Western themed brand. Uh, my company developed a new adventure themed brand uh, that really took off. Over the years, it developed, it, it grew probably 200%. Revenues grew way more than that. And they became a multi-billion dollar adventure themed uh, retail brand. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2000 10, I was hired to be their marketing director. And then 2018, I left to finish my book called Your Brand Sucks, How to Ignite a Brand That Doesn't. And today I do a whole bunch of keynote speaking on a variety of leadership and marketing and branding topics. So how did I realize that ChatGPT was a really, really cool tool? Well, after spending about uh, 90 minutes writing a 30 second uh, radio spot, I decided to give ChatGPT a, a shot. So here's what I did. I prompted it with this, uh, this phrase. Write a radio script using 100 words that influences entrepreneurs, that's my target audience, to pay for my online branding course. Pretty interesting. This is what it came up with. Are you an entrepreneur looking to take your business to the next level? Do you want to stand out in a crowded market and attract more customers? If so, then our online branding course is perfect for you. Our course is designed specifically for entrepreneurs like you who want to build a strong and memorable brand that resonates with their target audience. With expert guidance and practical tips, you'll learn how to create a unique brand identity, develop a compelling brand story, and craft a brand message that communicates your values and offerings. I'm like, this is good. And the best part? You can access our course anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. I didn't even tell ChatGPT that. So why wait? Invest in yourself and your business today and enroll in our online branding course. Okay, that was pretty good, but it wasn't really in line with my brand. My brand has a little more fun in it. So I asked it, can you make it funner? Here's what it came up with. Hey there, entrepreneurs. Do you feel like business... Do you feel like your business is as memorable as a goldfish's memory? Don't worry, we've got you covered with our online branding course. Our course will teach you how to make your brand stand out like a unicorn in a herd of horses. Boom. You'll learn how to create a brand that people will remember even after they finished binge watching their favorite TV show. And the best part, you can learn at your own pace. 
so you don't have to worry about your cat knocking over your coffee cup while you're trying to take notes. So don't be a wallflower in the business world. Enroll in our online branding course today and start turning heads with your amazing brand. And then I was like, crap, AI just showed up. It's on my front porch. And is, is it going to take my job? But the more I looked into it, the more I realized it is a tool that I can use as my own slave, maximize and expand my uh, creative abilities. I, if I don't have enough employees, I can just use AI to help me generate um, content and materials. So I'm going to talk about two different things. ChatGPT, which is a text-based program that uh, uses human language. Uh, it understands human language and then it spits out human language. And the second is mid-journey. You type in human language to describe an image that you want and then it produces an image for you. So what is ChatGPT? So I asked ChatGPT what it was and this is how it described itself. Uh, by the way, the first time it spit out something, it was so complex and so wordy. I was like, uh, can you just write it so a third grader could understand it? This is what it came up with. ChatGPT is a type of computer program that can understand and talk like humans. It was made by a group of smart people who taught it to read a lot of books and websites so it could learn how people talk. It can help people by answering questions or having conversations with them. And it's used in things like robots, online chats, and other helpful tools. Now, while ChatGPT can do all of those things, I'm gonna talk specifically about how it can help marketing and advertising people like you. So what are some things that chat GPT can help you with? These are ones that I came up with, but I'm sure there's more. And by the way, disclaimer, chat GPT is learning from the internet. And this may surprise you, but not everything you learn on the internet is actually true. So you have to kind of do your own due diligence and do your own research at times to validate facts that chat GPT may, facts that chat GPT may give you. So these are things I came up with, like customer research, product service benefits, like what, what does my product service do? Um, course outlines for training courses, headline creation, body copy, radio scripts, and even mid-journey image prompts, which we'll get to a little bit later. So let's jump into a demo of ChatGPT. Okay, so here was my prompt. Write a 10-word title for a keynote presentation to help convenience stores win against big chain restaurants. Now in the convenience store world, everybody's trying to develop stores for food and stuff like that to, um, to really compete. And this is how quick it responds, okay? Uh, now I wanna say, well, uh, give me 10 options because they don't like it. Okay, so it can come up with 10 of these things. Now, the next thing for me to do is to go, okay, I need to infuse my brand personality into this. So now I know my brand is more fun. It's more exciting. So I'm just gonna say, uh, these are great. Can you make them funny? I love this. How convenience stores can fry out fry the chains. Um, and by the way, I haven't seen these these results. This is just from from uh, from scratch here. Um, the Rebel Alliance against the dark side of chain restaurants. That's great. The saviors of hangry customers everywhere. It's actually pretty creative and pretty good. Now understand that ChatGPT is searching the internet for all kinds of information. This may surprise you, but not everything on the internet is true. So you've got to do your own fact checking and also do some due diligence of your own. Probably want to wordsmith it just a little bit to in infuse more of your personality into it, okay? So with such a powerful tool, it'd be super, super easy to rely on the, the information you get back from ChatGPT. So how do you, how do you um, prep it or prime it to make sure that it is um, in line with your brand, okay? So here's, here's what I do. The thing that makes me and my company different is about my energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. And I've kind of condensed that into like this metaphor of a brand spark, 
all right? My personality, the, eject, the adjectives I'd use to describe my brand are professional, creative, energetic, unexpected, joyful, and I've described that as fun, happy, humorous, okay? Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, you know that that's, that's kind of how I would be described. And I also incorporate vocabulary such as ignite, spark, light, fire, kindle, and stoke that all kind of uh, uh, are under the umbrella of the whole ignite brand theme. And so with, with that brand strategy, that brand strategy, I can now create images and visual references that reflect that strategy. So for example, uh, my logo is a flaming E. I've got like my outfits and stuff that have the logo on there and they're black or they're white or red. My colors down there below. My website looks like that. My, my book looks like that. So everything in my brand is um, tied into the, um, the brand spark. Okay. So kind of here's, here's the steps uh, that I use in my book. The first one is F find your brand spark. That's the unique point of difference. The second is identify your target customers. The third is to realize your core belief. Now that, that belief is like Simon Sinek calls it your why. Why do you do what you do? And then E, establish your brand adjectives. How would you describe your brand? And I often tell people, customers and, uh, and um, clients, uh, make sure that a couple of your adjectives that you pull together can't be used to describe any of your competitors because if they can, then basically you can, you can describe your competitors with the same adjectives you can describe yourself. And so there's not a lot of difference. To make sure ChatGPT gives me my branded stuff, I want to prime it. And the way you prime that is by a series of prompts or questions. So you may not be able to read this, but this says, my company helps entrepreneurs develop a distinctive look and feel for their brand to unify their marketing materials. My brand uses visual and verbal references based on the term ignite. And then I ask it, do you understand? It says, yes, I understand your company provides branding services to entrepreneurs, helping them create a unique visual and verbal identity for their brand. Your brand identity is centered around the term ignite. Now this is where I know ChatGPT is intelligent because it's starting to think. It says, which suggests ideas such as energy, passion, and transformation. This theme likely informs the design and messaging used in your marketing materials. Exactly. So I say, yes, my brand can be described as professional, creative, energetic, exciting, and joyful. Do you understand? It says, yes, I understand. Based on your description, your brand has a distinct personality that conveys professionalism and creativity while also being energetic, exciting, and joyful. This suggests that your branding services aim to help entrepreneurs this is, I love this, aims to help entrepreneurs communicate their own unique personalities and values through their brand identity. I'm like, yes, this guy's got it. So then I say, I wanna make sure that my language incorporates the verbs I like to use, the vocabulary I like to use in my brand. So I say, I incorporate verbs and vocabulary in my marketing materials that reference ignite, such as spark, light, fire, kindle, and stoke. Do you understand? Of course, ChatGPT says, yes, I understand. As part of your branding strategy, you incorporate verbs and vocabulary related to the terms ignite in your marketing materials. These words such as spark, light, fire, kindle, and stoke, stroke, and stoke help to reinforce the theme of energy and transformation associated with your brand. And this is great. This, this, this tells me that, uh, that ChatGPT understands branding by consistently using these words across your marketing channels, you can help to create a cohesive and memorable brand identity. I'm like, okay, we are now primed. So with my brand in mind, will you write a 50 word description of an online branding course for me? Sure. Here's a 50 word description of an online branding course. Now I would usually spend like 45 minutes, maybe an hour trying to wordsmith this, but this gives me an initial starting point. It says, discover the power of brand identity with our online course, designed to help entrepreneurs create a distinctive look and feel for their business. Learn how to develop a brand personality, craft a compelling message, and use visual and verbal cues to communicate your unique value proposition. Ignite your brand and stand out in a crowded market. That's yeah, a good start, but it lacks a little bit for me. So I say, good start. Try adding a little more humor 
and the verb spark. So it responds, sure. Here's a revised 50 word description of an online branding course with added humor and the verb spark. Ready to spark your brand to life? Join our online branding course and learn how to ignite your business with a personality that's as unique as you are. From crafting a compelling message to using visual and verbal cues that spark joy, we'll help you create a brand that stands out from the competition. Let's light the way together. Now, this, I, I've spent just a few minutes prom, priming it, priming ChatGPT to get me a starting point where I can go in and massage this. So if you don't have a lot of resources like a marketing team uh, in your back pocket or a writer on standby, you can use ChatGPT Chat to do a whole bunch of, of work for you to kind of get the ball rolling. So that's ChatGPT. And we just scratched the surface with, with AI. Um, now I wanna go into mid-journey. Now I can see that AI can handle textual-based information. And as an illustrator and a director for photography and videography, I thought there is no way AI can be creative in, in the ability to come up with visual images until mid-journey. So I'm like, I got this made. Here's the deal. And here's how, kind of how I, uh, I, I discovered it. So in an effort to uh, get people's attention and uh, kind of show off my creativity or invite people to be on my podcast or whatever, or sometimes I'll use this to, uh, uh, I'll send a sketch to a, um, an event planner and say, hey, I see you have an event, event coming up. I'd love to be considered as a speaker for your event. And when they see a picture of themselves looking, you know, like this, they, they usually freak out. But what would happen is I would always get asked, so do you use AI to generate these images? And I was like, AI can't generate these images. Well, or could it? So here's, here's what I did. Not illustration wise, but I thought, can it do photographs? Now, uh, a lot of retailers have to sell food or products or whatever. So I did this little test. I said, um, okay, mid journey. I want uh, the, the prompt I gave was um, uh, imagine a mouth watering photo of a chicken and bacon biscuit breakfast sandwich on a butcher block. Here's what I got. Okay. Now you need to understand that mid journey is not sourcing images that exist online, like a Google search and bringing them back. It is creating images on the fly. These images don't exist somewhere on the internet. Okay. So I zoom in or I, I asked uh, uh, Midjourney to enlarge and add resolution to the first one. And this is what it looks like. You can see the shininess on the bacon and there's cheese oozing off of it. It's awesome. Now, it doesn't make great results every time. Sometimes they're super weird. So um, sometimes people have extra fingers and stuff. So, but that's what Photoshop is for. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Question for you. So yeah, you brought ahead. up a good point. Uh, you know, does the chat uh, GBT, is it like, do we need to worry about like plagiarism or anything? You know, right now there's not. Right now there's not. But I like, you can use it as long as you don't say, I wrote this. It's important right now, if I were if I were you guys, I would say, hey, this was helped. I was assisted by ChatGPT. Unless you use that as clay to then revise or rewrite it. If you do that, then it's totally you. Now, so I, I wrote a book, uh, Your Brand Sucks, and it's directed to small businesses, entrepreneurs to help them build their, their business brand. Now, imagine if I just took chapter by chapter and I asked ChatGPT, would you please rewrite this chapter directed to personal branding? Now, holy crap, that would be awesome. I'd probably have to go in and massage a little bit, but that would save me a ton of time. Um, right now, we are, so, we are in the wild, wild west of AI. So there is still policy going on. There is still lots of uh, politicking in regards to ownership uh, creative license and creative ownership for AI generated images. 
But right now, I, I don't know what the, where it's going to end. The genie's out of the bottle. The cat's out of the bag. It's going to be really, really hard to put these things back on the shelf and make them not accessible to creative professionals. Um, so as much as you can right now, access these, try them out, play with them so you can get good at them. There will be a time in the future where we may have to give credit to either chat GPT or AI generated images or things like that. Does that, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. I used to think that it's going to take my job, but now it just enhances my job. And the people who know how to use these tools, like, like in the 1990s, when drawing tablet, like electrical drawing tablets came out. Um, I remember talking to other artists going, you know what? They're just a fad. No, no one's going to use those. Well, the people who adopted that technology earliest had the upper hand. They had the advantage over those who didn't. The flexibility, the creative abilities, the, um, the scope and speed at which digital illustration uh, offers is so much beyond traditional. And I think this, this is the same thing we're experiencing here with AI tools. Okay, so back to our scheduled program. So I got this biscuit sandwich that looks amazing. Um, and before I put these slides together, uh, when I put these slides together about a week and a half ago, um, I didn't know that you could actually train Midjourney to identify and recognize an image so that you can create that same, like the sandwich, in a variety of different situations. Okay, so you just and uh, that's something that we can go, we can look at another time. But from a branding perspective, I look at the sandwich. I say I like the sandwich, but it's not in the right environment. What if my brand is about like picnics and stuff like that? In fact, one of my clients is a is a company called um, Country Fair. Okay, so they have like red gingham and other textures associated with their brand that they want to incorporate into their imagery. So what if we said, take the same prompt, but then we just say, instead of on a butcher block, we say on a red and white gingham. So this is what we get. Now the sandwich looks different. And it's because I didn't prime the image that you can do, but I just didn't recognize at the time. So we've got this red and white gingham thing. And I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. But you wouldn't really make it better is if we, we, we added a countryside sunset to it to give us emotion because that's what really drives people to buy emotion. So let's put this sandwich into an emotional uh, sunrise setting. So I changed it uh, on red and white gingham and I added with a barnyard in the background at sunrise. Okay, here's what it came up with. Different sandwich, like I said, but wow, still very appealing. You, you may not want a breakfast sandwich or a burrito or whatever it is, right? How can you use this for you? So I'm, a, I'm like, I need a good headshot, right? I need a good headshot. Uh, I've got a green screen back here. I just pull from the ceiling, but I don't have a great studio. And this is the only, only background I've got. So I thought, what if I, what if I used Mid Journey to help me come up with a, either an idea or um, um, imagery that I could use for a headshot. So here, here's what I did. I, I, I added a prompt. I said, Midjourney, uh, imagine a smiling, bald, professional male speaker headshot wearing a bright blue suit. Okay, now this, this is what I got. Those turned out awesome. But then I'm gonna I'm like, wait a second. My colors are red. My, this isn't reflective on my brand. They look great, but it's not really my brand. So I go, okay. Uh, the new, new prompt was, give me an exciting photo of a bald, happy professional speaker wearing a red sports coat. He has subtle rim lighting, and the background is a dark purple gradient. Now, what I liked about this is in this version, the, um, the top left uh, image had like a lavender, kind of slightly purple shirt. And I'm like, okay, let's up res that one. So I rezzed it up and like, but that's not me. So using my camera, I grab my rim light over here and I kind of just set it behind me. And I, I took a picture. Like using Photoshop, I just placed the, uh, my face on top of that head. And then I removed the background, but you can still see that the neck doesn't match. And you can still see echoes of ears and stuff behind it and a little bit of the head. 
So I just sampled the background uh, images and I kind of e uh, erased or painted over the ears and then I masked off the neck portion. So it looks like this. So using Midjourney to create a foundational element for, oh, and then I added my own little pin. See that? My own little earn burn pin. So um, I, I, it saved me so much time and effort to go and get a headshot. Now, I could use this. I could send this to somebody. Or they can say, oh, this wasn't a real photograph. It's like, does anybody care? It's me. And I'm not trying to tell people, look, I'm, I own that suit. I'm not selling that suit. So this is just me. And I could use this. Now, I need, I need a cover image for a marketing course. And so I started thinking, okay, how could I, how could I use Midjourney to get me one of those? So I wrote a prompt. And the prompt was a confident, smiling, bald man wearing a red sports coat sitting on a stool in a studio. Position the man on the left side of the screen using rule of thirds. And then I give it some parameters like uh, version five, which is hyper photographic. There's like version four, version three, version two. These are evolutions of Mid Journey's technology. The aspect ratio of 16 wide by nine high, no tie, and at um, uh, a style of 200 instead. It goes from like zero to a thousand and uh, standard is usually like a hundred. Okay. And, and style is the, um, the, the, almost like the create, the creative level of it. It's kind of hard to explain, but there are tons of tutorials on this, but anyway, here's what it came up with these four different images. And I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. I really like the one, in the bottom, right? Even though you could see he's wearing a tie. So it's not perfect every time. So here's, here's what I decided to do. I'm going to show you how I use this. So I've got this picture of me. I pasted it on top of that image. And I'm just going to quickly select. I'm going to do it really rough. And you may not have like a, a tool like mine a drawing tool that gives me lots of flexibility. Look at all those hair on my ears. I didn't realize I was, had such hairy ears. So I'll grab a little bit of this and then I'm going to mask that out. So I just have that head. Okay. That's my head. Oh, I don't like this on my ear there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to paint that out. There we go. There's my head. I'm going to move the head, change the opacity here real quick. And I'm going to scale it down. Now I haven't done this one, done it with this one yet. So I'm just going to try to get it about right and match up the neck. Okay. There we go. Change the opacity back up here. So now I, uh, you can see I'm a little bit more red. That's okay for this purposes. So now I'm just going to go in and mask off the neck just a little bit more. And then for him, I need to get rid of his face and stuff. So I'll select all this up above him. And I'm going to airbrush just using these colors here. And there's different ways to do this too. And I'm just going to paint him out. Down here, I'm going to just kind of mask out the neck a little bit. And if I change the lighting, now it's me. It's me laughing. Add the graphics, flatten that, select all, copy that, bring it back into my keynote, paste that. Using these powerful AI tools will save you a ton of time and energy if you can give it the right prompts that build your brand. 
my AI branding masterclass and coaching program will help you define your brand and provide powerful guidelines to produce tons of highly effective marketing materials in less time with fewer people. Visit earnburn.com, that's my website, to schedule a call so we can see if this program will work for you. See you later.